Working in healthcare, you will find many people with differing comfort levels with computers. Managing these differences during an EHR implementation can be a challenge. Here are some thoughts on how to overcome those challenges. It's tough to manage the generational changes. And people would ask me, so what's the biggest barrier? The biggest barrier was keyboarding skills, typing. Um, so many of our physicians, you know, they, they enter their, their careers later in life than a lot of people because they do so much training. Um, so they stay in their careers later. So if you look at physicians, most of them are between the ages of, you know, 30 and 70, and a lot of them are around, you know, in the 50s. Um, and a lot of those physicians who are 50 years old, they never used computers in, in school, you know, high school, college, medical school. So they just don't have keyboarding skills. But on the other extreme, you've got the very young physician, you know, just leaving training in, the, in his, his or her early 30s. Um, and, and they are expecting technology like, you know, like nothing we've ever seen before. They've used computers most of their lives. They have personal devices. They have an expectation of computing like they see in the retail industry or the airline industry. They're expecting that level of automation. So it is a balancing act. Bridging the generational gap is a real challenge. We have providers that do not know how to type. Some of them print out emails because they don't even go on their email. So um, that's a real challenge. And what we found is that the flexibility of a system with potential for still dictation, voice recognition, technology, uh, macros, you know, we, we dictate a lot of the same things over and over again. I sure do, and I despise dictation. And so we have found with a, a system that's robust enough to be able to um, help physicians to find the, what they're comfortable with. And if that does lead to dictating your notes in the system, we certainly have to allow that. So there has to be an understanding that we are not rigid. We are going to help you take care of patients the best we can while still fitting in our meaningful use, the mandates, the things that we really need to do which overall really makes sense. The generational aspects are real. I think it's important for a leadership not to bring uh, a simply baby boomer set of sensibilities to problem solve. This phone in a physician's pocket is no longer seen as a phone, but it's a computer. And so you've got expectations that you can connect to your clinical system, that you can be notified of uh, relevant information instantly and they can actually support you in your decision making and at the end of the day that's what physicians do they make decisions about care and the, the notion that you have to go somewhere to get in front of a computer and log on just does not square with the idea of instant on and that's where we are now with consumer IT. So managing the generational difference between their reaction to the technology one of the first things is actually to never assume that they're going to be one way or the other because of their age um, that I've learned pretty quickly and try to share with uh, the analysts that to come to work. Um, and again, most of it is trying to get folks to understand how they learn, for one, because they learn very differently. And the second one is actually to understand the difference in where they are in their profession, which is how they're going to react to what we are talking to them about. So as a young one coming in, the technology, again, to them is just a thing. It has nothing to do with taking care of patients or doing anything. That's what they know how to do. To the older generation, um, they, they've never, you know, they've been able to take good care of their patients without it. So one of the first things I tell them is, don't you dare go in there and tell them that if they use this technology, um, the quality of their patient care is going to go up. Because their first response to you is going to be, I give very good quality care. So I found that the folks that actually had the most challenges in adopting were the, those mid-career professionals who were really in the stride of things, really knew how to do their stuff and do not get in their way because they got a job to do. Uh, surprisingly to me, but perhaps not surprisingly to everybody, the older providers who had seen so much change over the course of a career were really enthusiastic about adopting some of these tools. Uh, they, they had seen change come in healthcare and this is just another change to them. They were very comfortable with that and they were really looking forward to adopting uh, these tools. As we have implemented our electronic health record, we know that we're going to find every nurse, every medical assistant, every physician at a different point with computers, with electronic interfaces, and as a system, we have tried to meet them individually rather than trying to apply one cookie cutter, one size fits all program. 
As I said, we've tried to find those early adopters and, and tailor it to them. And in fact, they push us. Why can't I do this next step? Why can't I move forward? But we've also tried to meet uh, the, that reluctant, hesitant physician with, how can we make this work for you? Many of our medical assistants who we were afraid were not, were gonna lose their job because we did not think they were computer savvy enough to handle the transition, who suddenly are just flourishing. Some of our staff, some of our physicians are still very hesitant, still very skeptical, but we're seeing more and more of the middle of the pack now on board. You know, we had the early adopters from the start. The middle of the pack are now on board, and we're beginning to pull, okay, I see the benefits. Um, as we try to meet them and eliminate their problems up front. We have an anecdote from, from our department where one person is asking how they can remotely access and go through all, all the processes remotely, and another member of the class is asking how you log on. Um, so I think listening, finding where everyone is, and meeting them at that point is, is critical. You have to be sensitive to the physicians who really aren't, aren't embracing technology uh, and make sure you make things easy uh, for them. Uh, you also have to balance that versus, you know, for the, uh, the new residents, the new physicians, the new nurses who, who want all the technology right now and try to make some applications for them that, uh, that will make their lives easier. Uh, because you're right, it is about workflow and, and uh, what's going to make my life easier. We, we have found in our, in our environment that elbow to elbow support with experts in the system the physicians can feel their way along and can get better at it because really it's, it's that brain muscle memory just teaching you where to go. There are a lot of clicks in most every system, uh, but you know we all click through Google and we click through our iPhone and you just have to learn to click in a, you know, click where you click and uh, get things done that way. I think the key to motivating people has to do with understanding what drives people. Different people have different things that motivate them. Something that is going to work well for Susan um, is not going to be important at all to Phil. So part of um, understanding staff and being able to motivate staff on a project is being able to understand them well enough to know what's important to them. If they're involved in change, if they're involved in a project, they want to know how this has meaning. There are individual differences in clinicians that will affect both training and implementation. You need to understand what motivates users. Strive to find a balance. Background, clinical and computer experience, and even their expectations will affect how technology is accepted. Develop a flexible approach that accommodates these differences. Provide support so that even the most reluctant user will get more comfortable with and become an advocate for the technology.